Hey everybody, welcome back to Chicago Reacts. My name is Michael. I'm an actor here in the city of Chicago, and I am joined by the ever brilliant, the always talented, the one, the only. It's Zach, also an actor here in the city of Chicago. Soon to be worldwide. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, today Michael and I are with um our, probably our, our one of our very most dear creators on this platform, internet historian. Um it's it was our time to finally watch The Cost of Concordia. I think everybody on the channel has yes. done it now at this point, except for us. Um, and we've, we've heard great things. We've been recommended many times in the comments of other videos to finally do this. So um, it feels really good to be here now. Yes, I'm so looking forward to it. And I love Internet Historian. I've missed watching mm -hmm. Internet Historian. It's been a little bit mm -hmm. since we watched one. So mm -hmm. oh, always love it. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, check out the description for all those goodies, and uh, let's jump into it, shall we? Yep, let's do it. Here we go. Can't wait to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the Costa Concordia, ship of dreams. <laughs> it's been eight years. <laughs> I can still smell the buffets from oh, the look at that. The restaurant. The casino and three-story theater had hardly been used. Ah, the gym, <laughs> the day spa, the sheets in her 1,500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Costa Concordia cost $570 million to No. Oh. And you could tell. You could really. Oh, the Titanic music in the background. Yeah. So good. <laughs> I remember it like it was just a few years ago. We had left Civitavecchia, a port in Rome, and we were making our way to Savona. It was day two of our seven day journey. But that ship, I, she was cursed. Oh my God. Oh no. Which oh my opinion? god. A traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side. And Did you see that hit marker sound? <laughs> oh my god, uh, yes. Alright. Instead of smashing. A bad omen. But I'm not the superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong <laughs> on like Friday the 13th of January 2012. On the 100th year anniversary of the oh flooding, my! On a ship that's also only safety rated for two compartment flooding. Especially not when you have a five-star max level captain like Francisco Scatino. A man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years. He knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. Wait. For example, head of when he called... How? What? <laughs> That How did not that make, make any sense yeah. at How all, whatsoever. From security to captain. This because you'd have to go through all the boat training. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. What? Um, and and think about all they've been through already. They sailed under a ladder. They sailed, you right. know, on Friday. They, Come on, people. God, I just I love this channel so much. <laughs> I love it. So good. Oh my god. Oh. Also, just look at this man. You think that guy no, is like set to be a no nope. giving me confidence. No. Nope. None he's, whatsoever. At least he's giving me he thinks he's confident. He's confident, but it, like hollowed confidence. Yeah. Yeah. You look in this picture, he just looks like he's been scolded by his like by his his kindergarten teacher. Like <laughs> Try to get the I think as many wrinkles in my bro. Yeah, and this this is the man you want you want captaining your five hundred and seventy million dollar baby. Like, yeah. damn, this is not, this is gonna end very well. I have, I have very high expectations for the for the for this seven day cruise. Cause this emergency in two thousand eight, we uh. crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vanamon, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused an. <laughs> There's no footage here. That? Here's a scene from Speed 2 Cruise Control. <laughs> that is so funny. Another collision. I've got a good feeling about this. 
So let's set the scene. It's a beautiful evening. People uh. are having fun on the slides, drinks at the bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. And the ship is setting up for a little detour. It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals hate it, but the customers love it, and it's a tradition. Scatino, the captain, comes into the dining hall with the lady. Dominica Samorton. Remember this face, because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Scatino oh. eats his dinner with her and socializes for a little while. Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 feet from the island of Giglio. And how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. Scatino <laughs> turns to the... <laughs> the little bong is so good. All the little details. Oh, oh, man. I also love the running clock on the top, right? It really does add this, like, level of tension. Like... <laughs> It's this is happening so in right. real time. Like, oh, this is so good. Oh my god. The fella steering. His helmsman. Jacob Russell Bin. First yeah. interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price. And he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. It's his first time steering a massive ship, and he's very excited. At least, we think he is. It's hard to tell because he doesn't speak English or Italian very well at all. Off to a good start. The second in command orders the helmsman to 290. Now, don't be confused by these numbers, they're just the degrees on a compass. At the same time, the captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Palombo, who lives on the island. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. We're going closer than we've ever been before. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the cue, and then she'll poke her legs out. The captain is giving more orders. Pulling gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. But before we talk about that, let's talk about another big It's problem. always going to Language fast. barrier. Uh, yeah. This is God. Like if I was going to purchase a ticket for this particular cruise, like I just feel like this is the type of information that people should be entitled to. Like, hey, you should know that the helmsman of the ship doesn't speak the primary language. They're never going to um, say that. <laughs> I know. I know. It's well, horrible. It's crazy, it's like, too. Did you know that most um, uh, most cruise ships are uh, owned uh, or licensed in like different countries so like even when you're on um a cruise ship let's say it's a fully european cruise ship well mm -hmm. it might be owned by you know a company that operates out of a third world country that has completely different laws so you can get like pun punished through that country's laws not like yeah it's it's wild i I'm horribly like simplifying a, a video that I watched about this kind of That's, stuff. Wow, this I'm is curious nuts. if it'll come up at all, but this is nuts. I'm, sh I'm like, sure it will. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm trying will. to think who I watched that did it, but anyway, yeah, <laughs> go go look it up. It's crazy. You heard to hear first, folks. Yeah. Because at this point, the captain says three two five, but the helmsman relays three fifteen. So the first officer intervenes and he goes, no, 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 335, which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. The helmsman confirms 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. Oh, However, no. the captain should and would know this, except for the next problem. 
Complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. But they're not doing it. 3.30, he says. The helmsman relays 3.30. The ship reaches 16 knots. The captain then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. A few seconds pass, and then the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Without deviation, there is going to be a direct collision. Oh, shit! Scatino immediately commands the ship to start turning away. 335! Not enough. The captain shouts, 340! The captain yells, 350! Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. What they've got is understeer. Here's an example. The front end is not working. You're turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the order of 350, right now the yeah. bow is still only pointing at 327. Oh, not no. nearly enough to miss the rock. And oh no, it's about to get worse. That language barrier again. It the, the, the tone and just the... the um. Internet historian is so good at upping drama. Like he has yeah, literally yes. created like a, a thriller film here. Yeah. And I love Breaking all the down each yep, beat by beat as yep. we are like in the room mm -hmm. with the captain. The, the the music, the even like the if you look in the background, even when he's like got his 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 people yeah. in the foreground, the background's yeah. always moving. Like yeah. it's always giving this impression of movement. It's just yeah. like the editor the he works with is very good too. Oh yeah, the, the oh yeah level of jokes beyond just the written script is mm -hmm. is quite good. Mm -hmm. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays three forty. The captain snaps back three fifty starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder instructions. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells, midship, which centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull Rock. Oh my. Port 10. God. But the helmsman only gets to port five before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port, undoing the swing. Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too late. He has just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port! The second officer yells, We're gonna hit! Collision. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Are they in space now? <laughs> yep, they've hit, so everything's just flying. It's <laughs> so good. <laughs> Downtown Nordtown. <laughs> Ooh, we got a noir investigation. Oh, yeah. here we go. I never win. Gonna drink all by yourself? <laughs> Somebody has to. I oh, hear you're a man so who's good funny. at finding so folk. Ridiculous. I know, I know. So many people do not like Nordman. I think it's Kelsey. I think Kelsey doesn't like Nordman. Oh, no. Really? And yeah, and I'm just like, oh, no. I always look forward to Nordman. I know, I know. 
<laughs> and he's he's hitting us with the Nordman early here. I know. Like he really left us on a cliffhanger I there. I know. What's gonna happen? God. Man, we've got so much there's gonna be massive fallout. Yep. Oh, it's gonna yep. be thrilling. Can't wait. Oh, we gotta see this. I'm many things. I'm looking for this fella. I got to find him. It's breaking my little heart. I'll see what I can do. I have contacts in thousands of servers and dozens of countries across the globe. And just like that, she was gone. <gasps> Yo, Even internet historian. Calling. Reach out. We'll do your other voices. We will. For your other characters in, in this world. And we'll Norman. do it for free. Yeah. Well, or you can pay us. But <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, it would be to be featured on his channel. Yeah, that would be can, that would be pretty very good. Collab, cool. We'll do it. We'll we, do it. you know, we would. I would. I would fly to London to come collab with you. Sometimes when you follow a case, it follows you back. NordVPN can protect my online data, but who can protect me from myself? <laughs> when they said this job gets easier, it was just another lie. Forensics found his password spread all the way We're down good. the block. In a perfect world, we'd all <laughs> use NordVPN. <laughs> but I guess this isn't that kind of story. I took the brakes off my car. Man like me never really learned how to stop. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I took the steering wheel out too. I let the road take me where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> That's right, toots. Your husband's dead. Merry Christmas. Go to nordvpn.com slash internet historian for a huge discount on a two-year plan. <laughs> oh, bravo, Add Mr. M Mr. VPN man. The ship hits rocks on the port side. Here we are. A 53-meter gash opens up in the hull. Oh. Thousands of tons of water begin pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. At the helm, there's panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside is trapped and terrified. There's confusion across the ship. All of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Yes. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flooding. 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Lights, electrics, oh, no. turn, everything. That would the be captain orders the terrifying. Helm hard start. Yeah, like you're like in this giant boat. Like in the theater inside, yeah, it's gonna be pitch black. Pitch black. I mean, you're not gonna be able to see a thing. The good thing is, is at least they are right by that island. Yeah, like so it's, it's not, not like, like they hit an iceberg in the, in middle, the middle of the, of the ocean. ocean. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So like, rescue boats will be able to get there. It's still horrible though. Yeah. I don't know. And then you just have people like, there's no way people aren't gonna be like. Panicked. Seriously injured and maybe even die just because like people are trampling and like right right. People, I mean, even if you've got people like jumping ship, it's still the middle of the night in the ocean. Like, yep, yep. They, bad things can happen. It's actually nine forty six and one second exactly. Yeah, we got the minute, <laughs> second to second clock. Heck yes. Oh god, this is the final position of the rudder before power to that too is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard, plunged into absolute darkness. A quick breakdown of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six, more slowly, four. I wonder where he got this information from. Probably, uh, I'm sure that there was a like detailed debrief something yeah and like well this happened and this happened like i wonder if these should have similar to like a black box right on them of like here's all the things that are happening yeah but even for him to get like enough information where he can draw up a diagram 
that that somewhat uh, somewhat illustrates what what happened what what happened i think it's pretty that's pretty cool like the amount of research that had to go into this oh, video yeah, yeah. um is must have been astounding yeah or shortly after then 783 modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches these compartments especially though are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics mm. these main generators give power to the whole ship from propulsion motors to rudder to hotel functions pretty much everything when they went out the ship was a functionless sinking cage a few seconds later the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on when the lights come back on martin has vanished he's ditched the stage and it caused a huge panic in the theater as passengers are trying to flee to their cabins and to muster stations people already in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests staff rally and try to calm everyone down everything is fine there's no need for vests please return to your cabins the emergency generator starts all of the watertight doors close except for door 12 which is jammed the captain calls Pilot, the chief engineer as the ship begins to list on the port side there's water coming in yes there's water but where the engine room but a lot of water yes there's water you can't go down let's go down the other side in a moment we'll start the pumps i'll let you know in the theater the whole magic box apparatus slides right off the stage and falls into the crowd further increase in panic on the bridge an announcement is being prepared they are going to lie to prevent a panic let's just say we have a blackout the deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room he confirms to the bridge that at least compartments five six and seven are flooded announcements are made the captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault which is currently under control we're currently in a blackout our technicians are working to resolve the situation and we'll inform you of developments as they occur thank you for your attention coincidentally at the same time in the restaurant they're playing my heart will go on and it's very much no like way the captain calls the cost oh, no way <laughs> he tells the crisis unit that they've hit a rock no that is way so that is hilarious. You gotta be I mean, joking. I'm sure it was not hilarious in the moment, but that's a, that's insane. That's insane. That is insane. Oh man. That they're assessing damages and that they are also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, how are you gonna do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sails? Anyway, around this time, the wind direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which is a very good thing because you want wow. the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. A panicked passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. Plus, there was a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is tilting. So, she contacts her daughter in Italy. The daughter then calls the police, and the police call the harbour master. While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact? Thinking that the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point that the ship is going down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded, but don't worry, the ship's stability isn't in danger. Wrong. Passengers begin going to muster stations on their own initiative. The cruise director says, We have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? About 20 minutes. Have you asked passengers to put on life vests? It's just a blackout. I, I gotta go. The harbour master is suspicious. He says to his superiors that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship. Another problem. The fan on the emergency diesel generator isn't working properly. Pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire. Oh my the god. The captain is on the phone to the lower decks asking pointless questions like, no. is it still flooded? Yes. Yes it is. 
The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. The harbour master calls again. Finally, he says, the ship is taking on water through an opening in the left side and the ship is listing. He qualifies with, no one dead or injured. The harbour master asks if he needs help. Just to tow the boat? When in reality, they need a full rescue. With three compartments flooded, the captain finally realizes that things are really bad and they are not going to improve. Thank God. The Coast Guard orders every available yeah. ship to the scene. Meanwhile, up with the passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges. No problem. She said this despite knowing it was this wrong music. and that it further endangered lives. Most passengers at this point, though, aren't listening to this nonsense and they're busy figuring out how to abandon ship. Bing, 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 bing. Local television has already picked up the story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed. Oh my the god. Uh, oh, Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. The captain says, no, stay. We'll leave it. So what do we do? General emergency? The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandoned ship. Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The situation is under control. Please remain calm. But at this time, proceed to your master station. They're located outside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. <laughs> oh, perhaps too close to shore. Oh. The ship forcefully runs aground, creating an uneven center of gravity. And it begins heavily listing starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. Oh, the announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. And with that comes panic. And now that they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking people up and dropping them off. The patrol boats report to the Livorno Harbour Master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the harbour master asks the captain about it, and the captain says, no, 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 the ship is still floating. Uh, in fact, we're trying to manoeuvre it onto the shore. They know he's lying. Hold on, I'm reversing it. Beep, 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 beep. The captain then says <laughs> to bottom out the starboard anchor. So they drop out the anchors, but let out too much chain, effectively rendering them useless. The deputy mayor of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi <laughs> arrive at the harbour. They watch tobacco. the scene unfold. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races toward one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Scatino tells everyone to leave and take radios, but not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Dimitri Christus and Sylvia like Veronica leave with him. The maitre d'. This? Yeah. Sneaky. Sneaky. Well, I mean, his, his, <laughs> his career, his career, his life is, no matter what, his everything is over for him. Oh, everything. It's not even his first crash. Yep. Dear God. Oh, dude does not take his job seriously. He just likes, I th he just likes being the, the center of attention. Yep. He likes putting on a show. Yep. Ugh. He and some more can both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people are still on the ship. Mille reaches the helicopter base. The first helicopter, a slow-moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac for the hour-long flight south. Oh my god. Bozio is the last crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. He then leaves to help passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. And then, the ship's black box stops working. Apparently there were technical problems with it. That means, from here, things are going to get a little foggy in detail. A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship fishy, because fishy. they're expecting it to still be well above water. 
passengers are scaling down the port side by oh, ladder as wow. lifeboats return to pick them up. That thing is so messed up. Oh my goodness. What? Yes. You're not allowed to make a film I'm, movie. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. Who say you are? A second helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final resting place. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learnt that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, Oh, uh, no, actually I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm a klutz. But now that I'm on board, I, I may as well head back to shore. DeFalco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. And the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. From here, we only have mainstream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be super accurate. But they say oh. that Julius police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara. And among them is the captain. It's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there. And in fact, the police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescuing. A while later, a rescue boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbour. He speaks to the police. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina, and cries to him for about 15 minutes. Then Do you recognize this Halo soundtrack? Oh no, I it's didn't know. Halo it. music. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, From Chief of Reconciliation, I think. Then he oh. goes to the Harbor Master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Good. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. The captain takes the 30-second cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. He only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. But then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? We were the last to leave the ship. There's still people on board, yeah. All day Saturday, rescuers search for people on the ship. On Sunday morning, a South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slipped through the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. The last survivor, Manrico Giampandroni, was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin's service director. In the end, 32 people died. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. A crew member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia was the largest cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110,000 ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. Um, I didn't realize that many people died. That yeah. was horrible. That yeah. That is so horrible. Yeah. That, that like, makes me furious. Like, I was already like, this guy's an idiot. This guy sucks. I, 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 th like I thought it was going like, to be... I. Yeah. I thought it was going to be one wow. of those situations where, like, everyone... Maybe, maybe one person... Um, tragically, yeah, passed away for some reason or fell into the ocean and drowned or something like that. But I, I, I didn't realize it was going to be that thirty people. Wow, yeah, that is horrible. Hmm. Oh my. Oh. Oh. Hopefully, there's a, a little. I mean, bit look of a, at how much left. Like, there's got to be a trial or something. I wonder if. I wonder if. Yeah, I yeah. wonder what he gets, like his charges are because yeah. that's insane. Yeah. How they also got all these pictures to match up with the real life yeah. is wicked. Yeah, it's really cool. Also, how because did how did we not hear about? Like, did you know about I this think before the ship? I remember hearing about this. I'm trying to remember but, what year this was. I right, think it was I 2012. Yeah, I think I remember hearing about this. I I have I literally 
know nothing about the Costa Concordia. So I I, I don't, think that's surprising yeah. based on how big of an event this actually was. Well, how much did the cruise line industry pay to keep this hush hush? That's where my brain goes to. Mm. You know? Or Yeah, because I, I mean I don't even know what type what how many billions of dollar industry the cruise line industry is. Yeah. So yeah. Oh. I know. Halo Halo now you yes. hear it, right? Now I can hear it. I mean these images are so fascinating. Yeah. I'm curious too how they got it up. Yeah, because they had to like it had to get upright fix. first and then yeah, fix it. Well, his- I wonder if they like if they somehow like Sealed the hole and then pumped all the water out of it mm-hmm. and then taxied it. Yeah, I don't know. That apparatus or whatever it was that looked like it was being used to holster and bolster it up. Mm-hmm. God. Yeah, the amount of money that would have been involved too in this crash and like salvaging the ship and having to get rid of the wreckage and yeah. like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, Insane. But this isn't the end. It's just a halfway point. What most people know is that the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead, and that the captain abandoned ship like a coward. But there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. (laughs) There they are. The deets. The deets. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Oh. Oh. Box time. The Costa Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall, a casino, cha-ching, cha-ching. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities and try their luck in the hot zone. Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. High-end liquor, expensive furniture, dining sets, cash from the casino, cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, safes, Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century artists, as well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. Who steals a big (laughs) fuck-off bell? Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. A patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged with stealing and thieving and pinching. Later on, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. Chips from the casino, postcards, and cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. Some Australian guy even made a listing for the ship itself, advertising it as buyer to collect. Oh Hello, my god. Is. eBay pulled the plug. Yeah. That I'm curious. I don't know. That's weird to me that people were like, I want all of these like souvenirs of an uh, like a truly tragic event you're saying like the it, buyers of those like yeah the buyer who, who like who wants to buy those hotel cards and things like that it, right. it feels a little gross to me yo yeah oh yeah yeah so i don't know that's just interesting it's interesting um i don't know who would buy that but i guess you know, i mean think like, about this it though it's gonna be a big story right Right. I'm sure it'll be like we'll we'll want records of it, but man, it is just I guess I just can't picture doing it myself. Yeah. But think about like if you lived right off that island and like you knew that like, hey, it's uh whatever it is, it's a it's a hundred foot swim and you could potentially go find stuff that would change your life and your I life mean, yeah, by just going to explore a couple a thousand dollars worth mm-hmm. for a afternoon dive if you have yeah, the right man. gear and stuff yeah. yeah yeah 
I mean, it's also just dangerous, though. Oh no, absolutely. I'm sure that you know, I, I would. Is, the whole build, the ship is deteriorating. I would say that that's probably more as to why the police got involved. It was probably more than more about that um, controlling public safety than it was about like the oh you're looting yeah. and taking away goods. Of course, that's what it ends up being about on the outside. But I'm sure it was more about protecting public safety. Yeah. That's um, fair. Yeah, That's as fair. far as their rushed response to all of it. Yeah. <laughs> I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to that. But first, we have to talk about someone else. Dominica. Oh, yes. Yes. There was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Intense media speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. They both denied their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although she did later admit to the media that she found him handsome. And how could you not? You so fucking precious when you smile. But she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe, and they want to know I have something with him. It's more interesting. It's like, you know, some spicy, spicy in the story. Miss Morton also loved the spotlight, however. Oh, everyone! Oh, look! And took several interviews. But as the pressure mounted upon her, she began making ominous threats to Scatino, saying he must confess and that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. <laughs> In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Huh? And what was that package? Drugs, apparently. <laughs> so rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the Mafia and not without cause. A number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an aside, Scudino was tested this for drugs immediately like after the crash. Story. If she knew that this was like gonna potentially be a ticket out for her, yeah, like oh, let me let me spin this story about like drugs and this other like a uh, stuff going on. Yeah, to like take the heat off of me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, here, she's getting messy. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But it feels made up to me. It it does. But it's convenient in a very like very sneaky way. But yeah. that would like actually get picked up. Like it it's sneaky, but like it kind of works. Oh, like, oh yeah. It's yeah. sneaky yeah. and genius. Yeah. yeah. It's so sneaky conniving. Genius. It's brilliant. It's sneenius. It's sneaky genius. It's sneenius. <laughs> I mean, I don't like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get it being in this position where you have all of this like media attention and now mm -hmm. you're trying to spin something that's more yeah. interesting and also get the heat off of you and get it on the captain who is, even if you are, I'm sorry, even if she was in the brig, like, er, at, and mm -hmm. not the brig, the, uh, the bridge, the bridge. Yeah. And, um, was distracting. That's not her fault. Right, right. Like that's what. But my first thought was, it was like, yeah. But if she is doing this as like a scapegoat, or like, does she really need it? Like, I guess because yeah, it's still the captain's fault. Like, yeah, she didn't have any responsibility. She wasn't shirking any right. responsibility. She and, was just like, oh, cool. You'll take me to the brig, like yeah, the bridge. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, and like at worst, it's all. It all ultimately is speculation. Yeah. Like the whole thing about the the relationship or whatever between the two it's it, it really is all speculative there's no way to really prove that yeah. um and even if you did even if you proved that there was indeed some sort of relationship there that could or could not have been distracting it it doesn't i don't see how she's still at fault yeah right yeah um so interesting but it but it's it's good for our, inter, our internet historian content i'll tell you that much i'll tell is. you that much <laughs> Crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia <laughs> was searched and no drugs were reportedly ever found. How did we get here? Oh right, a helicopter. Sir Morton oh, no. commented on it again the next day and said, actually, 
That helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. So she expected to get some sort of first class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Wait, how did we get here? Oh, right. Sex with the captain. Divers were quick to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Morton's lingerie and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup bag. The jig was up, but they continued denying it. Sir Morton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. The judge pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth or shut up. So finally, she admitted it. See, si. Yes, I had a sentimental relationship with the captain. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. She was indeed the captain's lover. What is up, Troubler Nation? City no cheated on his wife with C. Morton. Oh my god! <laughs> She and Scatino had been having an affair for several weeks. She also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket. Ticket, please. And didn't need to pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's lover. Naturally, she gave another confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. And today I die the second time because, of course, people <laughs> find out something that I try to hide. Subsequent to the trial, she used her fame in Moldova to become a political activist, often appearing oh on television and radio God. and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna pause that so you can can you read the bottom part there? She's complaining that there aren't enough bins in the area. The police are telling her to calm down and point out that there are bins right there. <laughs> the crowd's standing there telling police she's allowed to protest here and generally white knighting. Okay. Yeah, just to add a little context. Yeah. Yeah, she definitely loves the spotlight though, doesn't she? Yeah. Oh my god. It's so obvious. Yeah. This is wild. Okay. Yeah. It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, Girl power. yada yada yada. And interestingly, part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, sure. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her ins. Oh god, not again. Uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Several civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crociere, and their parent company, Carnival Cruises, immediately saw a share drop of 23%. That's it. Don't beat. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost belongings, and loved ones. Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary route that the ship was uh, taking uh, at the time and, and was not only taking by the time the, the ship Today, was Junior! claiming that the ship was not approved to deviate from the route but that wasn't true approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles or that it was against <gasps> company rules also untrue because investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crociere offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That's kind of small. 11,000 euros, about $14,000, is the minimum compensation under international law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early. And that was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, we're not too happy with this deal, and they refused to take the money. We think the offer is an insult for what these poor passengers went through. We think that the compensation being offered is not commensurate. <sighs> well, think about it too, because all those passengers were people with incredible amounts of money. 
and resources and valuables. And so well, the, I'm yeah. just saying, imagine the legal team that collectively those, all those passengers could put together. Across, well, I mean, like yeah, like when you're so thinking, many, you've right, a lot right. of passengers. That's what I'm saying. That's and what I'm they saying. they all have, I mean, you know, cruises are, it's not like only the upper echelon going on cruises. Right. You know, like, right. But, but still, you definitely, there, there were enough people on that ship where they yeah, definitely I'm sure there had. Were some people with money and then you've got right. so many people that mm-hmm. you can do like a class action exactly style lawsuit. a very effective class yeah. action lawsuit so take it compensation being offered is not commensurate <laughs> costa crochier would lodge a plea deal with the tuscany court to pay a 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial the judge agrees costa crochier is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flecked the residual droplets of responsibility onto the faces of six staff members. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal responsibility. Offered is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. Eventually, Passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. It's not they were awarded 30,000 euros each. Other cases, especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. So, so they, they, they what? Basically tri- tripled their money, the amount of extra work and, and heartbreak that that must have been entailed? Yeah, I mean, it dragged it out. Yeah. But again, they had lawyers working for them. It wasn't right, like, right. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Thought it was going to be more than that, to be yeah. honest. And fuck Carnival Cruise Day for paying a million, uh, just pay us a million dollars and you're all good. You, you really, you all, all blame is completely diverted. Like, what an absolute. I know. I feel like disgusting uh, thing. So many ways to get out of. Crimes if, if if you have money yeah yeah <laughs> New York attorney Peter Rene traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At Rene and Rene, we personally work on every case, and we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. And while on the job, a seventh case cropped up via mail. email. An elderly woman, a loner, said, Help me, Mr. Ronai, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. <laughs> so Mr. Ronai agreed to speak with her. Oh, my God. However, oh, no. there were some inconsistencies in her story. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd. But Costa is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bitch! Still, Mr. Ronai was suspicious. They wouldn't... Cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. <laughs> Cheaty old Petey, eh? Oh That's my so god. I, the- <laughs> <laughs> I love internet historians. I do so too. Oh my god. Luna said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. He'll know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Because then she asked, How much money do you think this is worth? Uh, this is a huge red flag, Petey. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Ah, look, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding and the child isn't missing at all. Uh Uh-huh. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. Oh. Okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police with him. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. Yeah, I saw her today. Oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swings. 
Oh no, the jig was up. So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. It's a miracle! And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, old Petey, I'm beginning to think they weren't even on the boat. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mum, it's just a neighbour. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam. Because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. The law firm that never sleeps, call 1-800-664-7... <laughs> Please they no, are actually sir. very good lawyers. <laughs> that is nice. Oh no. Ow. Ow. Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course. Get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Gregorio de Felca, the naval officer who shouted at Scatino to Vada a bordo caso became a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scatino to go down with the ship. <laughs> and when the captain chickened out, DeFelco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. When the captain first reported just a blackout, DeFelco didn't believe the story and immediately began preparing a rescue effort, which likely saved several lives. His actions were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. Accordingly, shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso were being printed by the end of the week, others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, without warning, DeFelco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. Hear what I said, you've been demoted. DeFelco said that he had been passed up for promotion, that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. DeFelco was tres furioso, and there was public speculation that it was owing to bad blood between himself and Admiral Delano, his former boss. His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss said, ah, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show more maturity and professionalism to advance his career. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, DeFelco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. He still serves there today. I'm the company now. <laughs> Oh, good. The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. So the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. While under house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rye magazine. I have no idea what it says, I don't speak Italian. But goddammit, he must have some kind of charisma going on, because there's yeah, been a lot of speculation oh. in the press that he had an affair with her as well. You can't keep getting away with it! Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. <laughs> so, Scatino and five others are facing criminal charges. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatino's. And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness oh. testimony against Scatino. He touched yeah. me. Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community. So the helmsmen with the English problems went to jail. That's. Yeah, well, they man, all went. Yeah, they. That's like. I mean, it was just such it's a just bad an everybody cocktail. loses. Yeah, it was it wasn't good. But again, to me, it all comes down to like. 
the captain being right so it, should, it should be the person that promoted him to captain it should have been the person that let him be captain that should have gotten in trouble <laughs> like yeah i don't know he just seemed like a show off and yeah. he seemed to be like it all comes down to him i mean even if some of the other decisions were made poorly like i don't know it just seems really weird i don't know i think he i think i kind of get it mm -hmm. but yeah i don't know here we are moving into the final four or five minutes here. Community service or house arrest, not a bad deal. A good deal, a good deal. And that meant that Scatino was now all on his own. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. Oh my God. That there was confusion over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. Mm -hmm. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the oh outskirts of Jakarta. God. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. He just scalped again. And he hasn't been found since. After that, Ferrarini gave his testimony, then Silva... Oh, look, we don't have time to relitigate the whole trial. So let's just go straight <laughs> to the verdict. Guilty! Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. He is sentenced to 16 years and one month in prison. But wait, there's still the appeals. The appeals trial begins. And the verdict on the appeal? Surprise! Rejected! So Scatino's lawyers appealed again. And the verdict on the final appeal? Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic affair. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. Scatino was not present. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years oh. and four months after the disaster, he was finally in a cell. Wow. Oh, here we go. Oh, we're going to figure out how they did it. Yeah. The salvage operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated $1.2 billion. Yes. Beginning in early 2012, they first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, oh, yeah. they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. Yeah. In early 2013, a platform Dang. was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. The sponsons were then oh. dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. Dang. The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. Dang. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. That is insane. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper, flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. Anyway, so these are the things that I remember from the Costa Concordia. That sweet, Maiden of the sea. And as for you, little fella. <laughs> well, it's time to return you. <laughs> From whence you came.
<laughs> Six quick things. One, NordVPN, yes. good product, check them out. Number two, there's a new video on the second channel. You probably didn't see it because it was yes. temporarily restricted. Now it's not. Enjoy. Three, if you've never seen the second channel before, give I don't it a think go. We ever it's a different type fashion. of content, but I don't think we ever watched yeah, that one. I don't know if we watched that it's one. It's not just off-cut. We do love Four, the second channel. There are a couple mm -hmm. secret That's channels great. as well, but I ain't telling you where they are. Five, secret no more channels. videos on the main channel. Back to 10 to 15 minutes and more of them. Six, there's a Q&A coming out next week on incognito mode. It's got a ton of detail that we had to cut for the sake of brevity and will no doubt feature a ton of corrections as well. That's oh, it. Oh, sick. Thank you. Oh, maybe we'll Spicy. have to jump into that one if we if Spicy. if y'all like this one, we'll jump into that one. Yo, that was insane. That was so well worth the wait. Oh, it was, it was so, so um, good. I'm so glad we finally got to experience that. Um, yeah. It's kind of a long time coming for Mike and I, and um, yeah, just a brilliant, another brilliant um, display of incognito of of Internet historians' brilliance, aka incognito mode. Yeah, yeah, I'll fill yeah. that in. Um, and, uh, so funny. It's just so like interesting, especially mm -hmm. these things that sort of happened that were like captivating and captivated like the attention of mm -hmm. like, a global audience, yeah. but only for a certain amount of time. Right. It's really interesting to go back and look at like all the details of everything that happened because especially now, you know, our, our media turnaround is or media attention is you know 24 to 48 hours is really like what people focus on and it's yeah. interesting to see you know like that was a huge event where the captain was clearly at fault and it mm -hmm. still took five years yeah five plus years for him to be in prison that's why like the legal system just sucks is insane yeah yeah so yeah i think it's fascinating and yeah, yeah really really cool so i thank you so much for suggesting this video glad that we finally got around to yeah. it yeah and always love internet historian yeah and hopefully hopefully we'll be back with some more internet historian soon there are definitely still quite a few internet incognito mode videos michael and i need to check out as well so mm -hmm. um it's days where he's on our list of videos that we have to do it yeah. it, it always is a complete and utter highlight to me so yeah it's a blast yeah um uh, with that Happy said We'll see you next time on Chicago React.